How you doing, sir? How you doing, man? You have your driver's license, vehicle brakes on you? Uh, what, what, what's going on? Uh, I'd be happy to tell you once I see who I'm talking to, all right? Uh, I need, I need you to let me know, like, what's going on. Like, what, 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 what happened? What, what, uh, I'd be, like I said, I'd be happy to tell you once I, I see information. I'm not giving you my information until you tell me what you pulled me over for. In Michigan. A police officer demands a driver's ID when he asks what he did wrong, the cop loses it. Failure to give me my information is the rest of both ends, okay? So you can either do this the easy way or the hard way, all right? I need to know what you're pulling me over for. I'm going to tell you once I see information, all right? I'm going to I got information, but I'm not giving you my information until you tell me what you're pulling me over for. Here's here's the deal. Either give me your ID or you go to jail. Detail 5 radio. I'll be on a stop, enter through the parks, you send me another car, and have an uncooperative accident. My tag's expired, and my lights out. I'd be happy to tell you, sir. Are you a lawyer, sir? Because to be honest with you, I have a right, I have a right to remain silent, right? So I could just sit here and ignore you. Uh, no, you can't, sir. I don't ask her any questions. Okay, well, it's going to turn out very poorly for you. It's fine, but you're not telling me what's going on, and that ain't right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you what the deal is. You're probably suspended, don't so you don't want to give me your license. Here's the deal. For all I know, you could be trying to kill me right now. You're absolutely ridiculous, all right? I don't care. All right, because step out of the it's car. Been, it's been too many. I'm not stepping out the car until, until you tell me what's going on. All right, open the door. You got to let me know what's going on, man. You're not going to. You're going to jail is what's going on. For what? For what? You ain't. What charges? On what charges? <laughs> This is yet another example of how law enforcement will escalate a situation that does not need escalating. A timeless example of police brutality. The ACLU sent a letter dated May 23rd asking the Downriver Detroit Suburbs Police Department to review the stop, retrain officers if necessary, amend policies, and discipline the officers involved. Taylor Police declined to comment on the incident but said an investigation would be conducted. So about that investigation after his arrest mr jones was stripped to his underwear and detained for several hours in a cold holding cell these events began when jones demanded an explanation for the stop wrote the aclu in may 2017 we filed an internal affairs complaint against the officers involved and publicly released the footage in august the internal affairs complaint concluded with no finding of fault on the part of the officers but the department revised its policies to require its police officers to advise all drivers they pull over of the basis for the stop so this is a learning curve for you putting guns to an innocent person bag that's a learning curve i'm not saying that i'm just saying i said every call there's something to learn that's a learning curve you put guns to my back. That's a learning curve for you. That's a learning curve. You put guns to my back. That's a learning curve. I could have died. And that's a learning curve for you. A learning curve. The woman behind the camera alleges Arlington, Texas police pulled out their firearms on her and put them to her back. A learning curve. Really? A learning curve. A learning curve? That's a learning curve. They put guns to my back. That's a learning curve? A learning curve? Really? 
a learning curve. This video is troubling and disgusting for many innocent people who deal with crap like this on the daily. A learning, this is my life. And you want to talk about your education? A learning curve? Then she believes she catches the police in the act of deleting footage. Why are you wiping the surveillance video? Ma'am, I can't elaborate on our investigation. Why are you wiping the surveillance video? Watch it. We don't, we're not allowed to wipe it. I just heard you say until you finish wiping the surveillance video. You miss her. Hey, uh, the female that came out of 225 was running a... Uh, that's your best contact. Uh, they had guns in my back, y'all. If the officer did indeed call it a learning curve, and we stress these are allegations as the video picked up after the cop potentially uttered those words, if true, she should not be a public official in this line of work. This story is not getting enough visibility, so please let me give this a boost. Danielle was allegedly held at gunpoint, executioner style, by the Arlington Police Department, and it turns out they had the wrong person. But the thing is, is they were looking for a male suspect anyway. Like Dinesh, we want to give it a boost as well. Being held at gunpoint is traumatic. In that video, you can hear a woman going into shock. Accident, learning curve, these are not excuses. You know, I got into a car accident one time. A police officer said to me, it's not an accident. If you were paying attention, it wouldn't have happened. I think those rules should apply to them as well. Uh, accident and learning curve do not excuse what happened. If they were paying attention, maybe this wouldn't have happened. You know, we've seen so many instances where cops show how incompetent they are, but to mistake this woman for a man is just another inexcusable moment amongst many. I suppose locally, the only credit for the story getting picked up goes to James Hartley of the Fort Worth Star-Telegram, who wrote, Police said they believed after watching surveillance video that the suspect in an armed robbery at a convenience store in the 2700 block of East Abrams Street went to a nearby motel after the crime. When officers went to the motel to look for him, someone there directed them to a specific room on the second floor and said he might be inside, according to police. Officers went to that room and, because they believed the suspect was armed, approached it with their weapons drawn, quote, for their own safety and the safety of other people at the motel, police said in an emailed statement to the Star-Telegram. There's a lot okay, that I'm going to elaborate on when it comes to taking the police at their word in just a few moments. To put a bow on this article, though, officers then gave commands for everyone inside the motel room to come out and detained a woman when she walked out of the room, police said. When police searched the room and determined the woman had nothing to do with the incident and that they'd received inaccurate information, they released the woman, according to the statement. According to police, a patrol sergeant later went to the motel lobby to speak with the woman and her mother about what had happened. Happen. Here's the issue we have. Do not take the police's word until it is factually proven. Philip Stinson, a criminologist and professor of criminal justice at Bowling Green State University, said it's fairly common for officers to lie in police reports. Stinson has tracked arrest cases of non-federal sworn law enforcement officers who have been charged with at least one crime from 2005 to 2014. His research shows that out of more than 10,000 officer arrest cases, about 6.3% involve false reports or statements. About a quarter of those cases involving false reports or statements also involve alleged acts of police violence. And he said the problem is probably more common than the data suggests. 